But you have to realize, and I quoted this the other day, Smith Wigglesworth said, to ask God for power after you have received the Holy Spirit is an insult to God. Yes. Yeah, it's an insult. That's the problem. People think that they don't have power because they don't feel something. But let me tell you if, you, if God's power had a feeling, you couldn't stand it. It could not abide in you because you couldn't stand it. Have you ever seen? Now listen, I understand God. You know, sometimes people are not used to the power of God. And whenever the power of God is there, they fall down. I get that. They're not used to it. But now notice, they fall down, but I don't. But I'm the one delivering the power. Why? Because God insulates us so that we can carry his power and deliver it. But if you're not used to it, then it can sometimes knock you down. All right? But now think about that. Imagine if the power of God knocked you down every time that it was present. Nothing would ever get done. I mean, think about that. You're just like, all right, Father, send your power, and everybody in the place just falls down. <laughs> and they were just like, now who's going to get, well, you might have got a blessing, but you didn't get healed. Amen? Why? Because everybody's knocked out. You know? I, Father, I just want you to just pour your power through me, and there you go. <laughs> you don't even get to lay hands on anybody. Why? Because you just fall apart. So we have to realize we are carriers of that power. And that power has no feeling to it, right? Now listen to this. Now we have power and we have authority. But now notice, some things you don't even need power for. The disciples went out, and when they were first sent out, he didn't give them power. He gave them authority. He didn't give them power till later, to the second time they went out. Now think about that. So the first time they went out, they healed the sick, and they cast out devils, they did all this stuff, and they didn't even have power. All they had was authority. Think about that. So a lot of people, I, I need to feel something. No, authority doesn't have a feeling either. Authority just has an action. Right? So quit waiting for a feeling and actually believe the authority you have. Because that's what he said. Behold, I give unto you authority. Authority. You got that? When you have authority. Now, if you need, now here's the thing. If you need power, there's power available. Right? I mean, you take a person, you take a, 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 an official you know, a president or something like that, he doesn't have power. He's got authority. His power are those guys with the dark shades that surround him and have things in their ear, right? And on their wrist, and they're, they're talking, you know. <laughs> See, that's, that's the power he has because he has authority, and as he speaks, that authority is there. And then if he needs power, believe me, the power will converge, right, and solve the situation. So quit worrying about the power part and just know that you have authority. And when you have authority, you speak. Then if you need power, I'm pretty sure I heard Jesus talk about a, several legions of angels that he could send. Amen. And believe me, they excel in power. Yeah. Amen? Amen? She says, well I, well, I just don't feel power. Well, don't worry about what you feel. Just exercise the authority of Jesus Christ. You're his representative speaking on his behalf. Amen? So, r real quick, we're just going to go through these right now. Acts chapter 1. Now, listen carefully if you write this out. Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 8 especially. What does that do? He said, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. That's the promise. You have that? That's the promise. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. That's whenever the Holy Spirit showed up, and they all began to speak with other tongues. Isn't that right? when they were filled with the Holy Ghost, okay? Now, that's, that's the power, okay? That showed, first they had the promise, now we got the power, because the power showed up. Acts chapter 3. In Acts chapter 3, uh, verses 1 through 16, the disciples, Peter and John, are going to the temple to pray. They go down, they reach down to this man, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. They lift him up. The man is instantly healed. He jumps and runs around and does all kinds of stuff. What is that? That's the proof they got the power, right? So you got the promise, you got the proof, and then you got the power, right? Or you got the promise and the power and then the proof. But in Acts 4, religious people didn't like it. So they take them in and say, quit doing this. So what do you got then? So now you've got the promise, you've got the power, you've got the proof. Get ready for the persecution. Why? Because that's coming. Why? For the word's sake. 
ain't about you. See, that's the funny thing. Oh, I got this power. I'm anointed. I'm great. Ain't about you. Why? If it was about you, the devil would come after you. He ain't coming after you. He comes immediately to steal the word. It's the word you present. That's what counts. See, that's what, why? Because the gospel, the word of God, the gospel, the good news of Jesus is the power of God unto salvation. What is salvation? Healing, deliverance, freedom, prosperity, all that is in there. And it's the word of God that brings that. Amen? Do you see this? What you've got, you've got to start using. You've got authority. Now, I will tell you, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall receive power, miraculous ability. The word is dunamis. You have power abiding in you that you may never use. But you've got to decide. God is not going to push you out there and make you do it. He wants you to submit his will. He wants you to listen, listen. He wants you to love people so much that you are willing to get over yourself and step out and touch lives. Yes. 